Welcome again to Dairy Judging 101. I am Dr. Katherine Knowlton, a professor in the Department of Dairy Science at Virginia Tech. We're doing a series of short videos on the basics of judging dairy cattle. Today we're going to start talking about judging heifers. If you've watched our other videos, you know that the approach to dairy judging that we teach is based heavily on the PDCA scorecard. This is an official publication of the Purebred Dairy Cattle Association, and the relative weightings to different traits is based on research results. Unfortunately, there is no such official PDCA scorecard for judging heifers. I want to give a shout out to the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Faculty and staff there propose and distribute this scorecard for dairy calves and heifers, and it works quite well. At Virginia Tech, we take basically the same approach, but when we teach it, we just organize it into three categories, correctness, including frame, feet, and legs, dairiness, and size and scale. So you know I love mantras. These are phrases or sentences that I repeat to myself or have my students repeat to themselves to remind them of their priorities. When we're judging heifers, this is what we're looking for. Correct, clean and open heifers who are big enough. In this module, I'm going to focus on correctness. I'll talk about dairiness and size in a later video. So correctness. To me, this includes correctness of frame, including tops, rumps, and shoulders, as well as correctness of feet and legs. Just as with other traits, for me, the possible answers are, yes, she's a correct heifer. No, she's not a correct heifer. Or, I'd like to find better. At this point, I'm not looking to identify the most correct heifers in the class. My goal is to sort the heifers into groups. Get the correct dairy heifers that are big enough grouped together. Once I have them grouped, that's when I start comparing heifers. But for now, she walks in the ring. The first thing I'm looking at is correctness of frame, feet, and legs. And the answers are yes, no, or I'd like to find better. So I gave you our overall mantra, correct, clean and open heifers who are big enough. Let's zoom in and focus on correctness, and I have a mantra for that too. I'm looking for heifers that are correct in their tops, rumps, and legs. I'm looking for heifers that are correct in their tops, rumps, and legs. So let's talk about correctness of frame. First thing I'm looking at is their top line, their back. We want heifers to be straight in their top line. In this slide, the Holstein calf is weak in her loin. The red calf has the opposite problem. She's roaching. She's too high in the loin. In the jersey, she just kind of got hit with the ugly stick. She's really not straight over the top line. For me, the Holstein and the red and white calf are, I can live with it, but I'd like to find better. That jersey, she's really not very correct in her frame. Here are three heifers that are just beautiful over the top line. These are really straight-topped, hard-loined heifers. And yes, they're all jerseys. So now you know my secret. I love jerseys. So from the top line, now let's zoom in on the rump. We want heifers to be just about level from hooks to pins. If anything, the pins should be just a nickel lower than the hips. All three of these heifers are fine. They're good rumped heifers. Here are two heifers who slope too much in the rump, that jersey I showed you earlier. And here's a Holstein heifer. She slopes off in the rump, and you see where the arrow is pointing. Her thurls are back, her thurls are low. This rump affected how this calf walked, and so I'm, I'm pretty critical of it. Let's take just a minute and zoom in on the rump on that brown Swiss heifer. When I first started judging, and even now, I think Swiss heifers are among the more difficult classes to judge. I could tell you all about the recurring nightmare I have of 53 brown Swiss junior calves in the ring at one time, but I won't bore you. Anyway, look at the rump on that dark heifer, and then I've got, grabbed another picture also. The dark heifer, even with her head down, you can see that her pins are still below her hips. The other heifer, the pins significantly below the hips. That's typical of brown Swiss, and it's not a problem. If Swiss are almost always going to slope a little bit more in the rump than the other breeds, and it's not a problem. Both of these heifers are a yes in correctness of rump. As we're talking about judging tops and rumps and heifers, I need to remind you of something that I talked about in an earlier video. As you're looking at these heifers and you see something wrong in their tops or in their rumps or even in their legs, make sure you figure out if it's a structural thing 
or if she's just standing funny. Remember, heifers are like toddlers. They tend to have temper tantrums. You need to figure out, is she standing that way because she wants to? It's a behavioral problem. Or is it because she has to, a structural problem? Here's an example for you. Two Jersey heifers were in a judging contest last fall in Louisville. Both of them are standing with sloped rumps. But I'm going to ask you, which one is truly low in the pins? One of them, I think she's just standing funny. The other one, I think, has got a structural problem. So take a look, see if you can figure it out, and I'll show you in the next slide. As I looked at those heifers, I thought it was the heifer that's closer to us. The light-colored heifer is the one who's got a problem with her rump and her legs. There's a couple of reasons for that. First, look where these arrows are pointing. They're pointing at the thorough placement. We want those thurls to be halfway between the hooks and the pins. The dark heifer's thurls are just right. The light-colored heifer, her thurls are back. The other thing, I think that dark heifer is just kind of standing scrunched up. Her pins are a little bit low, but that's because her legs are tucked right up underneath her. The light-colored heifer has got those low pins even though her leg is back and behind her. So I think the dark heifer, she's just standing funny. She's scrunched up a little bit. The light-colored heifer, I'm critical of her rump and legs. So we've talked about correctness of the top and the rump. Let's talk about correctness of the shoulder. I've got this third on my list of priorities because it's not as important to me as correctness over the top and in the rump, but in the extremes it's a problem. Here I am showing you a calf who is quite loose in the shoulder. Do you see how it's almost like her shoulder blade is coming away from the body wall? We would call that a, a loose shoulder, and this heifer, it, it's pretty extreme. I'm going to stop again for a minute and talk about judging Swiss heifers. Again, I have this recurring nightmare. Maybe you don't struggle with it as much as I do. I love Swiss, and in some ways they are a little bit different than the other breeds. And one of them is in the shoulder. If you look at both of these heifers, especially that one in the lower right, these are really good Swiss heifers. And yet, if they were in another breed, we might criticize them for being a little bit loose in the shoulder. Swiss just grow differently. Give these heifers another six months, those front ends are going to catch up and they're fine. So in a brown Swiss, I'm not going to criticize shoulder the way I would in, in a Holstein, let's say. Okay, change the subject a little bit. Again, a heifer walks in the ring and the first thing I'm looking for is correctness of frame and feet and legs. If you've seen our video on judging feet and legs, you know that there's a lot that can be wrong in feet and legs. Our mantra for feet and legs is, Hawk's feet, can she walk? I won't go through all of this here. I want you to see that video for a full discussion. But I'm going to show you some heifers with leg problems and give you an idea of how serious I think they are. For instance, take a look at these two Jersey heifers. I'm looking at their hocks the set to, from the side, whether they carry their legs beneath them, whether they hock in. Both of these jerseys have that last problem. They hock in. But I have a one fault rule. A heifer can have one fault in her legs and I can still call her a good legged heifer. They don't have to be perfect. Hocking in especially is pretty common in heifers and it often corrects itself after they calve. But when a heifer starts to have more than one fault, that's when it's going to be, I can live with it, but I'd like to find better. For instance, this isn't a bad heifer. There's a lot to like about her. But she has two faults in her legs that I don't like. The first is that she has too much set to her ha. I've put some red lines on there so you can see the angle that I'm talking about. That's too crooked. I want this to be less of an angle, so she's got too much set to her hock. That's the first fault. The second fault is that she's got that German Shepherd thing going on. If you've seen the feet and legs video, you know that I really don't like cows who hold their legs behind them. And this visual of a German Shepherd and how they stand has helped me a lot in identifying it when I see it. If you look at this heifer between her hooks and her pins, her thurls, where the arrow is, are more than halfway back. That makes her carry her legs behind her like a German Shepherd. So far I have shown you pictures of heifers who had one fault that doesn't really bother me, those jerseys that hocked in, 
and also a heifer who's got two faults and so is, is getting into the I'd, I'd like to find better category, a heifer that I want to move down a little bit because of her feet and legs. But now I'm going to start talking about what makes a heifer a no for me, a heifer that I'm really going to be critical of and move further down than you, than you might expect. And the first is bad feet. Again, remember from the feet and legs video, when I say bad feet, I mean pasterns, foot angle, and depth of heel. On the left is a really pretty Holstein calf, but her feet bother me a little bit. She's a bit soft in the pastern. This is not common in calves. In fact, I had a hard time finding a picture of a calf with soft pasterns. This particular case is not that severe. This is going to be, I'd like to find better in terms of feet and legs on this heifer. But if it was worse, really soft pasterns in a calf are not a good sign. On the right is something even worse. I guess this is kind of my pet peeve. That's heifers with a really shallow heel. You see how that hairline runs straight to the ground. There's no hoof between the hairline and the ground. And this is a pretty serious fault. This is something that's going to make this heifer a no for me on feet and legs. Here's a useful picture. I know that shallow heel is a subtle thing and it can be hard to see. Here's your visual cue. A lot of times, cows who have a shallow heel will also have a spread toe, like the Holstein in the lower right. Do you see how the two claws of her hoof are spread? A spread toe, for me, is a visual cue to then look, and yup, wouldn't you know it, she has a shallow heel. Here's another heifer I'm not a fan of, largely because of her feet and legs. But it's subtle, so let's look close. The first is that she's got that shallow heel. You see where the arrow is pointing? That hairline runs straight to the ground. I want to see hoof between the hairline and the ground. It gives the cow some protection. In addition to the shallow heel, this heifer toes out in back. And she hocks in. So between the shallow heel, toeing out, and hocking in, I think this heifer is going to twist her legs when she walks. And that's a big deal. Maybe this is too subtle. Let me show you in contrast three Jersey heifers that I'm not worried about. All three calves in this lineup hock in just a little bit, but not to the point that I'm at all worried about it. When they walk, they track normally, they're fine. The heifer we've been talking about is just in, in a different category. She's not okay on her hind legs. I hope you can see the difference. If you can't now, just keep looking at cows, keep watching them walk, and you'll get it. Let's pull all the way back and remember our overall priorities in judging heifers. We are looking for correct, clean and open heifers who are big enough. This talk focused on correctness. Soon I'll put up another that will focus on clean, open, and big enough. To end on a positive note, here are some calves that are very correct. I'm not saying they're perfect, but when I look at them for correctness, it's easy to say yes. And the reason I can say yes is that these heifers are correct in their tops, rumps, and legs. I'm a big believer in mantras, so all together now, when I'm judging heifers, I'm looking for heifers that are correct in their tops, rumps, and legs. Correct in their tops, rumps, and legs. Correct in their tops, rumps, and legs. Heifers that are correct in their tops, their rumps, and their legs. I hope this presentation has been useful to you and that you'll go to our YouTube channel and watch some of the others that we're posting. But now let me stop and do some thank yous. First, I need to thank the Virginia Tech Dairy Science students who are helping me put this series together and contributed photos for this particular presentation. They are Carol Wolhusian, Chelsea Abbott, and Hannah Van Dyke. Obviously, I need to thank Dr. Mike Barnes, the longtime coach of the Virginia Tech dairy judging team, who shaped the approach I've described here. Thank you also to World Dairy Expo, Dusty Sherm, and Hordes Dairymen for providing some of the photos that I've used. And as always, thank you to dairy farmers across the country for hosting judging practices for our judging teams and yours.